of this has happened for me because of dance. I don't know if you've seen the Queen Latifah show, Living Single. I'm the girl dancing on the beginning of that. And my career in this industry started as a gymnast, turned dancer into music videos, holding a microphone, TV, radio, and all this other stuff. But what's crazy is that you have to realize the power of your words. I remember being in 11th grade. I went to Newtown High School in Queens, and uh, Queens in the house. And I took a journalism class, and I fell in love with it. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be a journalist. I want to be a journalist. But you know, I've been doing gymnastics. I, was, I grew up in the YMCA system. Um, and then I took a second class senior year, and I was like, oh my God, I hate journalism. I don't want to do anything. But there was something about the writing, <clears throat> excuse me, that I loved. But for me, it was all about dance and gymnastics. I started late. I started at 10 years old as a gymnast uh, with the YMCA organization. And within a year, I was competing in national competition. And for me, also being a Girl Scout, I started as obviously a brownie, a junior, through a cadet. Being a Girl Scout and being a gymnast, part of a team, was my version of NYC great. However, if I had all of the things that Leslie Ann and Cindy are going to teach you, I'm telling you I would be, my career I think would have been 100 times bigger, better than what it was. I have sat through this last season when I saw the girls from 2019 and these girls now from 2020 and 21, congratulations to you and all the things that are part of this program that I wish that I had going into my college experience. You girls don't even realize, first of all, the angel wings on these two ladies are ginormous. And the angel wings that I see on Amaya and Karen and Leah that are coming up are just amazing. I'm so proud of them. Congratulations, ladies, for college and your full scholarships and all of that stuff. But what you guys are about to embark on is going to be something amazing. This is going to be the best sorority and game-changing family of your life. So soak it all in. Don't miss any opportunity that they are awarding to you. Anytime, whether it's to Tribeca Film Festival or CNN or all these places that they're giving you an opportunity to go, go. I don't care if you have a headache. I don't care if you don't feel like it. You will do yourself a disservice if you miss out on it. For me, gymnastics is a individual sport and it's a team sport, right? Because you have to place as a team to win national competitions, but you also have four individual opportunities to excel, balance beam, vaulting, floor, and uneven bars. But it doesn't work unless you're a unit, right? It's great that you can shine by yourself, but that you can't advance if the team doesn't advance. And that's the one thing that you learn when you are in a group setting like this that is going to allow you to be vulnerable, to share your tears, to share your fears, to like expose yourself, to ask questions of each other that nobody else is asking you. And this is the place to do it. This is the place to do it. Two words that my coach would always say that we would get in trouble for if we ever said it. We have to do laps, we have to do push-ups, we have to stay longer, we have to do whatever. If we ever said I can't, it was a problem. It was a problem. So you learn not to say those words. You learn not to do you can. I'll try. I'll do it again. And that's the only way that you get better and that you progress. The one thing for me going into, I guess, my career was that I didn't, I started off having a plan B, right? Because my mother didn't believe that dance or gymnastics was going to get me a full scholarship to college, but it did. I wasn't sure that it was going to happen that way, but it did. But of course, my degree is in exercise physiology, and of course, they want you to go and get your master's and do all these other things. But you have to kind of listen to your soul, and you have to do what feeds your soul. And sometimes you're going to get people who are like, no, you should get a regular nine to five, you should get what's stable, you should get, you know, something that's a little bit more secure, and it doesn't always work like that. I'm somebody who's in the arts. The arts are up and down. You can have a hit TV show in January, your show gets canceled in June, and you don't know where your next dime is coming from. And then you have to worry about, oh my God, I gotta get a nine to five, and you are the most miserable human being on the planet. So now you have to figure out how that's gonna work for you. So what you end up doing is if you have to get that nine to five because you gotta keep the lights on, right? You gotta keep the car notes so they don't come and repossess you. Then you find a way to use that job to finance your dream. Right? Use the money from that job to pay for extra 
courses, pay for equipment, pay for marketing, whatever it is you need to do so that you still stay on the path for your dream. One thing that I've learned about this business is that you're gonna get some opposition and some pressure, whether it's from the men of executive levels or for women who look exactly like you, right? Because you never know what kind of insecurities other people have when you walk into the room. And you have to be prepared not to take that personal. And the way you do that is by making sure that your skill set is always 200%. Two things that are going to propel you forward is one is having your skill set on point because there's always going to be somebody who's going to be trying to chase and be better than you who's behind you. So that means you have to stay on top of it. Whether it's dance, whether it's graphic arts, whatever it is, you have to make sure that you know what's next, what's coming, be an innovator, and be the best at your, your gift. Also what's most important is your reputation. When you walk into the room and when you walk out of the room, you always want somebody to say, you don't, want some, you don't want somebody to be like, oh, here comes Leslie Ann again. Mm. You know, you want somebody to be like, oh, Leslie, Leslie's here. She's always on time. She's always prepared. She's always dressed for the part. She's always ready to teach. She's always helping people. She talks to the executive the same way she talks to the janitor, which is with respect. And you kind of want, you want your reputation to be your calling card because that's the thing that's gonna get you to the next level throughout your whole career. So don't let that stop you. Make sure that you move with intention, right? Because you move with a purpose. Make sure that your aim is always to accomplish your goal. Surround yourself with like-minded people, as you are in here, but even more specifically. If it's nursing, if it's, you know, whatever it is, find those other people and those other outlets and those resources so that you are always intended and focused on your goal. Stay with your intuition. That gut feeling that speaks to you inside of you will never lead you wrong. When you probably saw the paperwork for this, for New York City great, something about it said, yeah, I think I need to be in a room or I think I need to apply for it. And congratulations to everybody who made it past Sydney and got in here because your intuition led you to a very, very right place. Remember, you will always have the power of choice so that when you make a decision that's giving you maybe one or two different possibilities, the choice will always be yours. It's great to get advice from other people. Someone will give you a different perspective, but nobody has the right to make the decision for you but you. And it will always be the best thing that you could ever do for yourself. And even if it doesn't feel right, remember there's always lessons in failure. Because failure really is just another opportunity to do something better the second time around. Because it always does come back around. So don't be afraid of failing. Because there's always 10 ways to get into the building. Right, go in the basement, through the window, through the chimney, around the back door, however. Nothing is worse than having fear. So you wanna make sure that you do something that makes you feel uncomfortable so that there's nothing that you're ever afraid of. And I think even the simplest thing is that most people are afraid of asking people for something, whether it's money, whether it's for a job, or whether it's health, because of who they are. They're human just like you and I. We all bleed the same, we all use the bathroom the same way. The worst thing that somebody could do is tell you no. Okay, so if you say no, I'm gonna ask somebody else. Or if you say no, I'm gonna create a way that now you have to say yes. Or somebody else is gonna say yes, and usually what happens is this person who said no comes back to you with like, oh, well, I'm sorry I said no the first time, but you were right. So you can't keep staying focused on all of that. Um, I am so excited for what is coming with New York City Great, and the words that I hear, climb, ascend, my words for myself this year are elevation and evolution. That being a part of this program is going to take you to the next level, to a better level of yourself, and embrace it. Don't be afraid of the change that you see, because when you look in the mirror this year, and six months from now, or even after, from October to December, after you look in the mirror, you're gonna see a completely changed individual and you're gonna love who that person is looking back at you. Evolution is the second word that I use, right? To change, to grow, to sprout, to become something, to blossom, and that's what's gonna happen with you guys in this program. So I hope you're ready for it because it's really gonna be exciting. Um, I, I hear Leslie Ann and Simi talk about what it is to be parents, and I wish I was a parent, 
but I coach gymnastics for a long time and I teach dance to a lot of other girls and it gives me an opportunity to share my journey and to talk about the possibilities or what rejection feels like because you get a lot of that, especially in this entertainment business when you don't look the part. Even though you are more versed and have more intellect than the person next to you. For me as a dancer, um, I didn't know what it was for what's called a cattle call, right? I came in with skill. I came in doing backflips, you know, pointed toe, triple turns, the whole bit. And when I, the difference between New York and LA is that New York was really based on who's got the best moves, period. And the name Big Les came from me not being five foot tall and 90 pounds, right? Because you look at me and I'm typically not a gymnast. You're used to seeing Simone Biles or Dominic Dawes and they're all very small individuals. And everybody's like, hi, you play basketball, you run track. I'm like, no, I can't even dribble. <laughs> I'm just, I'm a gymnast. And so then they would say, well, who's the big girl doing backflips? And you'd be like, oh, that's Big Les, got it, got it. But you always end up having to prove yourself over and over and over again. And each time that you do, you want to make sure that it's a better version of yourself when you show people so that they can never question your skill or your um, athleticism or your intellect or your creativity and all of that. So I want to thank you guys. I know it's a long day. You guys have a long day ahead of you. I am so excited for what New York City Great offers for the guys and for the girls. You ladies have no idea how amazing this opportunity is for you. You girls are going to bond. You're going to just soar into higher heights. Seek every single opportunity that they offer you. And um, thank you for having me, guys. I'm so excited. Congratulations.